Welcome back to Funding Awesome, my podcast for diving deeper into the science behind the stocks. Earlier this year, I went to GTC, NVIDIA's huge developer conference focused on AI breakthroughs in every major market, from self-driving cars and supercomputers to robots and agentic AI. In this episode, I'll give you an exclusive inside look at some of the latest innovations in edge computing. I'm joined by Alan Burgoyne, Director of Enterprise Platforms, Product Marketing at NVIDIA, and we're going to explore the hardware for developing the next generation of AI applications, from NVIDIA's RTX Pro 6000 GPUs all the way down to DGX Spark, a supercomputer that can literally fit in the palm of your hands. And Alan had a few surprising things to say about where AI development is headed next. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. So when I think of NVIDIA, I usually think of massive GPUs that go into data centers, right? But we're standing right in front of an RTX Pro 6000 GPU. What is the big difference that people need to know between something that goes in a workstation like this and everything going on behind me there? It really comes down to workloads. Uh, people in workstations want a general purpose machine. They're people who are product designers. They may be doctors, they may be researchers. They do a lot of things they want to visualize as well as do compute and AI. These servers are really focused on that high-end compute. Uh, yeah. So not so much graphics or visualization. You wouldn't buy one of those to design a bicycle. Right. Uh, but these are what people use every day to design products that are all around us in the world around us. So yeah. uh, different use cases work the same workloads. These things can run AI, they can run compute, they can run graphics. It's just more designed for a desktop environment instead of the, the big multi-user, potentially thousands and millions of users in, right. in a server. So really developing in, up in the cloud, shared uh, resources, developing at the edge with an existing workstation. So not even for gaming, this is completely separate. You, you can run games on these, but uh, you know I would probably suggest maybe a, a more uh, yeah. Suitable like our GeForce are really designed for games. These are really designed for enterprise professionals. Sure, and so when I'm an enterprise professional uh, and I already have a powerful workstation today, what does the next generation of RTX Pros offer me that I don't already have? Like, help me understand. So with this generation, a couple things. One, you get Blackwell. It's our latest generation of GPU. So more advanced graphics, more advanced AI and compute. We've also doubled the memory. So we've got 96 gigabytes of memory available in these. Previous generation was 48. So People are running multi-application workflows. They're getting more AI augmented workflows. So not only am I doing my product design, for example, or I'm doing my medical research, I'm probably running AI models that are helping me do that work, right? Those co-pilots and agents we talked about. So having that additional memory, additional features of Blackwell are going to help people accelerate those workloads as they become more complicated and more infused with AI technology. Yeah, so there's a Blackwell in here, but this is just the graphics part of it, right? This is the GPU. There's no CPU in here, right? No CPU use. These will plug into a standard workstation and they will take advantage of the CPUs there. Now, this product is for data center, so it will actually go into a server. You can see it has no fans. The, it relies yeah. on the server racks, but, but it provides the same uh, graphics capabilities. So we do people have people who want to drive these out of servers. They may virtualize them. Right, and have virtual workstations going out to anywhere. Sure. Uh, but same experience, no matter whether you have it in a workstation or you have it in a server, you still get that same experience of that RTX. And what is the difference between this form factor and this form factor? So really what we've done in this generation is we wanted to maximize the performance we could get out of a Blackwell workstation GPU. So this card is actually running at 600 watts. It's very powerful. We're running as basically as fast as we can. But we know some people in their environment uh, you know, noise and scalability might be a consideration. So this one actually has a blower cooling unit on, runs at 300 watts. And so yeah. you heard Jensen talk about scale up and scale out. Yeah. So if you want to scale up, this is the most powerful single GPU you can get in a desktop system. Can't fit that many of those in a workstation chassis. Sure, maybe yeah. one, maybe two if you're lucky. These you can go up to four. So if you want to scale out, it's a little less performance. You're talking about 4,000 tops, maybe versus about 30, 3,500 tops. Okay but much more power efficient. But I could, 300 watts and I could fit four of them in a workstation. Yeah. So that's the scale out, right? If I really want to maximize the compute I can get in a single workstation chassis, that's the product you're going to. Okay, so max performance. From a max, single GPU. Yep, max, max performance per watt. And, and max in a chassis, and this of course is separate cooling. So you're talking about scaling up and scaling out, but when I look at that thing, it looks like you guys are scaling down. So We're going in, in, in all directions, right? Uh, so what is this? So this is 
DGX Spark. Uh, we introduced it as, as Project Digits back at CES in, yeah. in January. And the goal was to provide a desktop supercomputer. So it uses the same Grace Blackwell technology that we find in the data center. And you can see the chip there. That is a Grace Blackwell super chip. Yeah. It has a CPU and GPU and they're integrated. They're connected by high speed connection between those two. And it allows you to have great performance at desktop in a very small compact package. A lot of developers today, perhaps you're working on a laptop and you just can't work with the largest models or maybe you don't have access to the NVIDIA tool stack and your laptop that you're using. You could put one of these on your desk. Yeah. Now I've got my own personal little supercomputer. So if I need to work with a larger model, just send the work over there. Yeah. If I need to work with something in NVIDIA, maybe NIMS or our blueprint technologies or other technologies, send the work there. And the beauty of it is it's a DGX, so it runs the same operating system as servers in the data center. So you can easily migrate your work from this system to any DGX system or any accelerated NVIDIA cloud infrastructure. So it's a great development tool. Um, and again, it's really focused at developers. And here you can see one, if you need to scale up, scale yeah. up, you can connect two of them together. We do have our ConnectX technology in here. It gives you a high speed connection. So you can work with up to 200 billion parameter model here. You can go up to 400 here. So by connecting those together, so really giving you a pretty powerful little configuration on your desktop. It doesn't take much space, and you can have basically your own personal cloud, AI cloud, to send work to. That's nuts. So yeah, when I think of supercomputers traditionally, I think of what's behind us. But just to give you a sense for how small this is, like I do not have big hands at all. I'm basically the guy from the Burger King commercial, you know, with the tiny hands. And like you can really hold this in the palm of your hand, right? So one of the things I'm interested in understanding is what is the use case? So we talked a lot about you know, professionals having standalone assets for development in their right. desktop. Why would I want something like this on my desk when I already have something like that? What is the difference right. between the two? So the difference between the two is this is really focused at developers. So if you look at the workloads, it's going to be things like maybe I'm doing AI development work. Uh, yeah. Maybe I want to fine tune AI models. Maybe I want to run some inference either for testing, validating, uh, before I go to the data center, I want to make sure that my, my stuff is going to work. And then um, maybe I want a personal server on my yeah. desk. Maybe I want uh, to have a chat bot that I can ask questions. Maybe I'm a software developer. I can have my code yeah. chat bot there and it can be helping me. I could fine tune it with our code base so it gives me answers that look like our software and use it there. Um, again, you could run, the stacks run everywhere. Yeah. But if I'm doing a fine tuning example, I may take hours to run. Yeah. So I don't want to take my system and not be able to do any other work on it. Right. So if I've got one of these things, or perhaps I have a desktop or a laptop workstation, I don't want to have it bogged down and say, oh, that fine tuning, when that runs, it's going to use all the resources I have. Got so it. my machine's basically out of commission for a few hours. Send those workloads here. I can still do my email, attend my Zoom calls, do whatever it is I've go. got to do. It's much more powerful. Right, and send yeah. the work over there. So. Um, I really think people who have laptops or smaller desktop systems are going to want to use these. Now, you could scale one of these up and have a great AI development box out of it, but it's going to take a big footprint, right? It's not a tiny thing that could fit on my desk or maybe I can throw it in my backpack when I'm... Yeah. So that has a real Blackwell in it. This has a Grace Blackwell super chip in it. This is the GB10 right here, and again, not big at all, right? So this has really the whole Grace Blackwell architecture in it. So. One of my big questions is, why this form factor? Why not start twice as big? Is there like some optimum that resulted in something so small? Really, I think the goal was to build something very small, unobtrusive, that could sit on your desk. Yeah. And transportable, right. I guess. Like and, and if you want to move it around, we think people will plug in and sit there. But uh, something small, compact, and of course, the Grace Blackwell chip allows to do that. Now, the beauty of it is it is a full system. So you can connect a mouse, keyboard, it has display out on it. Oh, this just plugs right in. This is like literally slap it on your desk, peripherals, I'm up and running. If you want to do that, or you can just sit on your desk, plug it into the network and configure it as a network compute yeah. resource. And so that way, I'm working on my laptop. I want to send a job. I don't want to bog down my laptop or maybe I don't have the tools there. Send it to that box, keep working my laptop. It will sit there and compute in the background and do its job. So yeah. it depends on how you want to configure it. But either way, you can, you can set it up so as a standalone workstation. Or is, or is your own personal AI cloud? Yeah, and it seems so. The idea here is this is what I would use to like risk reduce the projects that I'm working on before starting to take my share of a shared resource, right? right? Yeah, so make sure all my code works, everything yes. like that. Yeah, we all know that data centers; those are precious resources. Yeah. So, experimenting in the data center 
it may not be the best way to, to get your work done because I'm, I may have to wait days or weeks to get some time on the big server clusters. And if I'm just experimenting, who knows if I'm getting the best use of my yeah. time. Where if I can flesh out my ideas, test it, validate it, have higher confidence that when I do get my time on the cloud or do get my time in the data center, I'm going to make the most of it. Yeah. And you never, so interesting, We, I was an electrical engineer back in the day, a long time ago, and you never go straight from this to that, right? There's actually another resource that we can go look at over there where it's more about sharing resources among your small team. So why don't you work us through the DGX workstation when we have a chance? What are we looking at here? So this is DGX station. Uh, we announced this, Jensen talked about this during the keynote. And this is, again, scaling up. So Digits is a nice box. It's got about 1,000 tops. Uh, we're looking at 20 petaflops of compute here. So again, a, a huge step function up. And this actually has Grace Blackwell, so it's more like a server chip. So that would be the Grace, and that would be the Blackwell? Right. Got it. And so what you have is uh, essentially a server style uh, implementation here. So we don't have graphics. You'll notice there's a, a separate GPU in there for graphics display out because yeah. this is basically our data center configuration. So uh, tremendous compute, tremendous power here. And so if you need more power than what you can get on, on a Spark, this could be for a power user. I want to do very large experiments. I might want to do some, some training or some really heavy fine tuning. Could be shared among a work group. Maybe you've got a couple of engineers who want a compute resource that they can use, kind of that intermediate between the data center and their yeah. desktop. So a real powerful system, lets them do experimentation, lets them do them work. And again, it's all about uh, bringing the power where it needs to be. Sure. Right? And so giving users the most powerful system they can at their desktop, this is going to be it. So really depends on what you're doing, what kind of work you want to work with, uh, but this is going to be the most powerful AI system you can have at your desk. Give me a few examples of what like an engineering team would use something like this for. Let's say we, wanted, we want to fine tune a model, we've got a very large data set, um, we can go with that coding example. Let's say we take all the software a company has, maybe yeah. millions and millions of lines of code. I want to fine tune that model. That's a pretty large data set that I want to train with. Yeah. right? So it would probably be a little bit more than you want to run on a Spark. You could, but maybe you don't want to wait days for it to happen. Put it in a box like this, you can actually do that pretty quickly. Then validate that model. See if it's working, right? And you may say, let's take more code, move it to data center, do a bigger training run, right. something like that. Uh, perhaps you want to actually train some models. I probably wouldn't do hundreds of billions of parameters here, but a trillion parameters, but it may take a few, maybe 100,000 or so. Yeah. Do a little training, I'm testing out a feature, make sure that it's going to work, we get the results, and then maybe we'll go to data center or cloud for that fine tuning. So it lets you go to that next level of work um, for uh, getting ready to move those loads where they need to be. And uh, it's a pretty powerful system, so uh, it really opens the door for a lot more work here locally uh, before you make that next step up. Got it, and so I have, I have like two follow-up questions. So back there, what we're really talking about there is more inference, right? Using existing models. Fine-tuning, fine fine -tuning, inference, inference, right? Inference. And, and it's a single user system, so that's yeah. an important thing. Is you're not going to put that in the network and have hundreds of people right. hitting it. Uh, you could put this on the network. It does have ConnectX8, so pretty powerful. You could cluster some together if you would like. Uh, but this could be a shared resource yeah. right, among a, a small team of engineers or developers if you want to set it that way. Or if I'm lucky enough and I can get one of these for myself, I've got a very powerful <laughs> system that I can use for my own development purposes. Yeah. So uh, that's real the difference is single user, this could be for small. Multi-tenant, yeah. And we're, and we're not just talking about large language models, right? We're talking about image, video, any kind of model that helps with large scale development, not just like, oh, help me answer questions about my data, but help me build new resources and assets for my right. company and things like that. And also we talked a lot about agents uh, yeah. multiple models, right? Uh, things that may go beyond what I can run comfortably in my workstation or, or a Spark. Uh, you can run that here. We're going to have a lot more memory. It's going to have over, you know, I think 786 gigs of memory here. So you can run very large workloads. So multi-models, you can experiment with creating agents. And also we talked a lot about test time scaling. Yeah. Where now you're going to generate a lot more tokens. Um, and so when you want to evaluate these reasoning models, you'll see how they're thinking and how many passes they make through the model. So um, if that's an important part of your testing workflow, the ability to generate those tokens quickly, yeah, uh, you may want to opt for one of these because if I'm working in kind of an agent environment with lots of reasoning models, um, that cost of that intelligence is, is more compute. Sure. Right, and so uh, perfect system for those kind of experiments when you're working with some of these new reasoning models. And I always ask this, so I'm curious your take. 
what kind of industries do you see this impacting first? You know, is, there, is it more like automotive? Is it more like art and design? Do you see like a specific industry adopting you know, these kind of systems earlier than others? Yeah, it, you know, and, and talking to some of the customers, I think when you look at something like a, a Spark, um, of course the, the creative people love the look of it, but I think people who are doing look and feel probably have a little bit smaller workloads or things they look at, or they want to experiment with it, like what part of our workflow can we use to accelerate here? Sure. Right, if I'm, I'm fine tuning, maybe I want to send 50, 100 images to get our look and feel through our creative assets. So having something like that, you can just let it run for a few hours. Now you've got a trained model that you can then deploy throughout everybody's systems and uh, be able to create your assets, right? Um, so those, are, I think, probably are going to be more industry agnostic because people are going to try them across yeah. industries. I hear people in finance, people in, in uh, engineering, you know, automotive, all want to give it a try. So that's all more about experimentation. Right. Okay. And, and perhaps local desktop experimentation, maybe local desktop deployment. Yeah. Uh, these are going to be people who are doing heavier work. So it'll be the research arms, and that could be in heavy enterprises. It could be in traditional, uh, you think of, of AI model development companies, right? So these will be a little bit more focused. Really depends on the company and the business. You know, do they have a staffed up AI team? Right, and yeah. can take advantage of this. Um, and the first people that come to mind, of course, are the big, the big model vendors and providers, sure. right? So they definitely can take advantage of this. But there are lots of large uh, companies and lots of different enterprises where they've staffed up AI teams and they're creating their own models, are training their own models with their proprietary data, right? And that's people who want to experiment and test. And so that's who you'll probably find uh, working there. Some of those experienced AI teams and some of those heavy industries. Yeah, this is incredible. I grew up you know, building my own PCs and stuff, and it's amazing how fast things are moving today and how much like computing has changed in just like maybe one decade. So thank you so much for walking me through everything. This is really incredible, and I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the future. A huge thank you to Alan Burgoyne for walking us through NVIDIA's Enterprise Workstation desktop products from the RTX Pro 6000 GPUs all the way down to DGX Spark and explaining how they'll help develop not just large language models, but AI models and applications in every major market. Another big thank you to NVIDIA for inviting me to cover GTC Live again this year, and a big thank you to you for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.